Hi everyone, um, my name is Kenzie Campbell and I did a research project for my capstone class for psychology in a class called Psychology of Objectification. Myself and two peers, Haley Sheik and Andy Presk, completed a project called Objectification Theory, Alternative Media Use to Disrupt Objectification Theory Pathways. So our project was a prevention project and our purpose was to create a community space with the common goal of increasing knowledge of objectification theory, increasing understanding of how the media normalizes objectification, and to practice disrupting the objectification pathway in the hope of preventing negative health outcomes in our community. So of course this leads us to the question of what is objectification theory and these pathways. Um, Fredrickson and Roberts in 1997 first identified this pathway, um, they found that, or they saw rather, that objectification experiences were contributing to the oppression and negative health outcomes of young people, specifically girls and women is who they studied. Um, so they found sexual objectification experiences were being internalized through self-objectification and body surveillance and really caused a whole slew of problems and negative health outcomes, such as body shame, lowered interoreceptive intero awareness, appearance and safety anxiety, reduced flow, and eating disorder symptomology. Other studies link um, this pathway to increased depression, anxiety, um, and uh, as well as like minority stress and, and experiences like that. The common thread really through all objectification theory research is that you're identifying objectification as an experience of being treated as a body or collection of body parts valued predominantly for your use or to consume by others, or to be consumed by others, sorry. So this can include cat calls, experiencing male gaze, which is repeated instances of being looked at and evaluated by men on the basis of physical appearance. This could be being treated as an object for sexual pleasure, removal of autonomy, um, exposure to sexually objectifying media, um, and that's really the last one that we're focusing on here for this project. So what increases or adds to objectification experiences and the likelihood of them? So we found and other researchers have found that the media, so specifically television, social media, magazines, and more, really convey social norms and can operate as, an, as objectification experiences. Um, these experiences in, from the media reinforce sociocultural standards of beauty. So the standard of being white, thin, tall, clear-skinned, etc., which are, um, you know, this unattainable ideal of the perfect person. So media can normalize the cultural practice of objectif objectifying gender and sexual minorities. And many negative health outcomes in OT are linked to, to young, young girls and women and sexual minorities and um, gender minorities internalizing these unattainable standards of beauty and being sexually objectified in media and advertisements. And so, of course, we started to research more about how, for our prevention project, we could disrupt these pathways. So we found that Ameri the APA um, had a task force on, and on the sexualization of girls, and they identified media literacy as effective prevention for this issue. They found that media literacy disrupts negative behaviors that may result from consuming objectifying media images. So media literacy educates community members and consumers about negative advertising practices, helps them identify the persuasive intent behind advertisements, encouraging you to look, dress, or act a certain way or an unattainable way, provides cognitive defenses to disrupt these manipulative visual communications. And really these cognitive defenses is what we're focusing on because they help protect us from internalizing harmful messages and unattainable cultural standards practices. That's the key here and a whole, um, a whole bunch of other studies have um, also backed that up as cognitive defenses being um, really important for this process in media literacy. We also identified community-based interventions um, to be something we were interested in and thought that they would be particularly effective for our Westminster community. So community-based interventions are where researchers who um, do the developing, planning, implementing, and evaluating of an intervention project are the members of the same community they seek to provide the intervention in. So community-based interventions do not focus on an individual's health, behavior, or personal characteristics, but rather they're really interested in 
um, focusing on population health or the health outcomes for an entire, often smaller group of individuals or community. Um, and in some cases, as researchers, you're taught to um, see if you're close to a research participant or close to community, you're taught to really see that as a deficit for your research. Um, in community-based interventions, your closeness to the community or your closeness to the issue at hand is actually seen as a benefit. So we came up with four hypotheses um, based on our research and what we wanted to conduct. So we thought that maybe participants in our research study would gain an increase in their media literacy skills and knowledge. We thought that participants would gain an increased awareness of objectification theory constructs and how the pathway operates. We thought that participants would gain an understanding of the negative outcomes of objectification experiences, including mental and physical health risks, and participants will be able to identify community responsibility to prevent sexual objectification as a key solution to the problem and as a key protective factor against experiencing negative outcomes from objectification. So for our project, we chose to use an alternative media source or a zine to distribute our information about objectification theory and media literacy. So zines are really counterculture, um, self-published like many media sources. They are most often found in subcultures like skate and snow snowboarding community, many radical or uh, radical justice movements like feminist movements and um, like um, Black Lives Matters and other political movements. Um, and they are created and made from original or adapted images, words and pictures. And they're much they're as much about community as it is about the product. Um, so they're really born from communities and um, a community project. So on screen right now, these images are the, are the front cover of the zine that we made um, for this project to distribute to our participants. So we also, in creating this zine, we had um, participants for our research project come and read the zine as well as experience um, conversation and a, a presentation to go deeper into the zine topics. But we had 14 participants who were all um, white European Americans um, who were gathered through convenience sampling. They were Westminster students or graduates, seven men and seven women self-identified, um, four bisexual individuals, seven heterosexual individuals, two queer individuals, and one non-conforming sexual identity. And the age range was from 21 to 25. And for our methods, we used the zine, the presentation that I mentioned earlier that just went a little bit deeper into these constructs and concepts. Um, we provided pizza as sort of an incentive and to say thank you. And then we, of course, had our measures. So we did a pre-test, post-test survey design. Um, we tested for media literacy um, and all of our tests were adapted from um, previously validated um, research studies. We did media literacy, objectification theory constructs, negative health outcomes from objectification theory and community interventions. And then our post-test had a demographics section. So our procedure, we had the pre-test um, survey go around. We invited students to get pizza and drinks, and then we had them read the zine. Um, before conversation started, we really invested in community building, um, talking about names, pronouns, um, and a kind of conversation starter question just so that people were comfortable and that we could talk about this subject, which is very key for community-based interventions, is creating a space where people can be real with each other and talk about like how we as a community can heal. Then we discussed the zine um, and clarified any areas of confusion that um, our participants may have had. We presented our PowerPoint, um, went deeper into these big concept constructs, especially after students got the basics from the zine. We did a critical conversation about the images through a media literacy lens, and we had um, examples of media literacy questions that you should use, as well as we practiced those um, on images. So then we did clarification of what this research study was for. We revealed it, and then we also asked any question or answered any questions if our participants had any. So we tested or we analyzed our data from our surveys with a Chromex Alpha to test its reliability. So the commonly accepted value um, of alpha is larger than 0 0.70. Our media literacy test wasn't quite there. It was at 0 0.633, but it was very close. But our other three test surveys were above the accepted um, statistic point. So we had alpha 0 0.770 for OTC test, 
um, alpha 0.881 for negative health outcomes and alpha 0.849 for community interventions test. Now our paired samples t-test is really the most um, interesting data and highly significant. So um, if you look at our at this mean box here, this first box on the on the first table, so we had an increase in means from each and every one of our, or each of our um, survey tests, our pre and our post tests, um, which is which is good. And then um, if you look at the bottom box here, this is really where you see if that is actually significant. So um, our p values for our tests were all significant. So uh, the commonly accepted p value would be less than 0 0.05, um, but it's even better if it's if it's less than 0 0.001. It's considered highly significant. So our media literacy test was significant at 0 0.041. Um, and then our other three tests were highly significant um, at or less than 0 0.005, which are great results. So participants reported higher levels of understanding of all four outcome variables of interest. Um, outcome assessments revealed that our objectives were achieved. We did increase understanding of media literacy. We increased knowledge of OT constructs, increased knowledge of the negative health outcomes that are outlined in OT, and increased awareness in community-based interventions. Highlights from our community discussion, we saw active engagement. People were asking questions and clarifying theoretical information. Um, people demonstrated an ability to apply their learning um, to real life scenarios. They applied personal experiences to concepts in the pathway. And they were able to like really be critical about media literacy as a tool, as well as um, experiences of, of objectification in their day-to-day -day lives. For strengths, we thought that it was good that participants were familiar with each other and with researchers, and that was really demonstrated in how deep we were able to be in our conversations. Um, we created a safe space and we used concrete examples to strengthen and apply knowledge. We practiced media literacy tools and um, we had good um, cisgender representation um, limitations though. We had a skewed, we could have had skewed results based on social desirability. So this was a very social justice group so they may have been expressing more understanding of the measurements and the constructs than they actually had. As well as we didn't have a lot of diversity in our group, they were all European American participants, all cisgender. Um, the scope of the advertisements shown could have been limited and then we had a small participant pool. For future directions, we really wanna see this study done on more of a longitudinal side. We wanna see this community-based intervention for other and more diverse samples, um, specifically for other communities to see if this is a fruitful way of protecting people and communities against objectification theory negative outcomes. Um, and that's everything. Thank you so much for listening and have a good day.